Yeah, let's get started. Horse yours. All right, welcome everybody. This is the weekly TSC call. I'm happy to see everybody showed up on time. Very nice. Uh, this is a public call. Everybody can uh, listen in and participate. You do have to be aware of two different things that are important though. Antitrust policy notice, which is on display if you're logged online. If not, make sure you go have a look. It's linked from the agenda. And the other part is the code of conduct, which basically asks you to behave like a decent human being. With that taken care of, uh, we can go on with the agenda, which I believe is relatively light, but we'll see. Uh, I just inserted the, before the call one announcement. It's just a reminder that the Hyperledger Global Forum early registration is about to end. It officially ends on February 18, and then prices go up. So if you're still on, not registered on the fence, you might want to hurry up. It's only one more, a few more days. Um, no. Silona, is there anything else you want to say? Um, I guess the main thing is is the piece about BOF tables. I don't have as many of those as I would like, but I do have everyone getting signed up now for their kiosks and, or I've touched base with everyone about kiosks and uh, videos. So um, moving forward on that, the main one would be the BOFs. Okay. So... If anybody is interested or has have questions, you can reach out to Silona and she'll be happy to fill you in on the details if you don't have them. Don't be shy. It's okay to ask and if it's not working out and it's not for you, that's fine. All right. Any other announcement from anyone? Hearing none, let's move on. So there's two quarterly reports. The first one was actually published slightly, I mean, just a little bit before the call last week. I carried it over because I, nobody had really had a chance to look at it in detail. I believe now most people have. There were a couple of questions asked, at least mine was answered. Thank you, Sara. And, uh, if uh, there's anybody else who has any other questions they want to ask now, I saw Mark had a question, but uh, Sarah. Oh, I only saw one question. Are there any others? Uh, yeah, because you know, what happens is people see the agenda, they're like, oh, there's those reports I haven't seen yet. See, 21 minutes ago. So I don't blame you for not having seen it. <laughs> let, let, let me find this, uh, just, just a moment, I'll just. It was it's just, right. it was a question about how many maintainers you have in the diversity across companies. Oh, we currently have only one at the moment and uh, there are some like um, occasional contributors, but we're working on that. We're really trying to find other companies and uh, we have some leads on that as well. Can't say much right now, but we're working on this. We, we, we really hope to increase the diversity among companies as well. It's like, it, it's not something we don't want. It's something we're working on and we'd like to have that soon. All right, thank you. <laughs> the other All question right. is, and I've already, you know, we, 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 we're always doing something. So there is an update as well that I've posted like pretty recently as well. It's just uh, that we fixed Caliper just in case, I don't know. Uh, I, oh, sorry. <laughs> I think it was important to mention. So there's something new as well. I'm sorry, it was also posted pretty recently, <laughs> just in case. It was something that probably some of the people did not see yet. Just wanted to say that it's there. And All right, thank you. We also have one of the maintainers, like technical maintainers, if you have any technical questions. Um, I, I see you comment on the, the integration with Ursa. Do you have any uh, characterization of, of how that is going uh, and uh, how useful the, I shouldn't say useful, but how well the, the, the integration is going with URSA both at the, the technical and interaction level. 
uh, well, I'll try to answer. Uh, we currently support a build which replaces all our crypto uh, functions, uh, like as a separate crypto provider with Ursa call calls, and uh, uh, it as for now it can only be done during compile time and uh, we are working uh, on uh, uh, being able to switch crypto in uh, runtime uh, based on the exact uh, keys uh, signatures uh, that we see in runtime uh, we want to use a library named multi hash for that but uh, we uh, are currently uh, uh, refactoring the our um, type system like classes and structures uh, to fit better with this library uh, this is expected um, like a month i think with release 1.2 Okay, and then remind me, you're mostly a C++ code base, and then you're calling into URSA through their C bindings? Yes. Okay. So, so I had a question for maybe the community architects and the TSC. With a project like this, that is there a way we can publicize better that they're looking for people? I think that community architects are helping us with that and uh, we, we really want to talk more about our project on the Hyperledger Global Forum. So um, one of our maintainers is going, you know, to make presentations and talk about this. So we hope it might, it might be useful somehow. And uh, yeah, we also think that some of the users of the of the project might become contributors as well as you know if you're uh, starting to work on a production version of uh, some of the you know like of some software based on Aroha you probably would like to uh, somehow affect what is going on in the development as well so we also hope to probably find more contributors and maintainers from that um, from you know from uh, this way like you know um yeah so but uh surely we we are very welcoming anyone who would like to join because it's like we believe this is a great project so we would really like some more diversity as well we're well, great to have new ideas yeah i was going to say mark i mean i don't know beyond what's done for every project anyway I don't know if there's anything special that could be done there. So, but. Are there any blog posts about like examples of how to get started with the Roja or, or things like that, that I, that might be a place where you could call out to uh, future contributors slash maintainers? I don't think that we have such blog posts at the moment, uh, but we do have some information about how to get started, you know, using um, the line interfaces and things like that. So we used to have them updated. Now we're creating a new version of the simple interface that might help people just to try it out in like, you know, like 10 minutes kind of thing. So yeah, we probably might write a blog and we are going to write blogs about uh, integrations of uh, like Burrow and Explorer and Ursa as well, because uh, people ask a lot of questions about cryptography. And I think it's important for many people. And uh, yeah, as, as a person who is uh, mostly talking to people and work on the project from like, uh, from like communication uh, side, I can tell that people are interested in projects like Ursa. So probably we'll also like make a blog about that. Currently, we are mostly focused on uh, representing Roja on the Global Forum. Yeah, Global Forum is all probably right. a good opportunity for all of us, uh, particularly yes. in leadership positions here, to be able to route people to the right projects. Um, and I guess for the projects, you can you can help facilitate that by by giving us points that can help us direct people in the right direction. Um, so a, a simple example might be that that C++ basis for, for Iroha, 
where we come upon people at Global Forum that are looking to get uh, involved with Hyperledger if they happen to be a C++ person, that seems like a, a good direction to send them. I think at some point it would be interesting to try to find out exactly what is of interest to people in Eero. Uh, is it really that it's C++ rather than Go or some other language that people prefer? Is it that there are certain functionalities like features that they are interested in? I think that could be very uh, telling in terms of, you know, what is, where is the actual value and maybe try to find out if there's some adjustment that needs to be made. Yeah, we currently try to present Aroha as a simpler solution, you know, with the ready to go like comments and queries, you know, you don't really need to write any smart contracts, but um, we also want to provide more, uh, more functionality with Burrow and smart contracts from Barrow from Barrow side. So yeah, I don't know, but uh, we used to talk about Aroha as a project that is a little simpler to, you know, to start work with. So, you know, without any smart contracts and such. And yeah, also like um, SDKs and, uh, and C++, sure. <laughs> Maybe some people, it will be interesting to work with C++. Well, that, that was the premise that was given to us initially, that this was a big differentiator that would draw a lot more contributors. And clearly this doesn't seem to have panned out. So it may be, you know, that's just the way it is. There's maybe a lesson to learn from there. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Thank you for your uh, report and answering the questions, both you and Mikael. And, um, Hey, Let's this, move on, this guys. Is Yala. This is the thing, Yala. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, yeah. I was muted on two lines. Um, just to echo, yes, on Global Forum, there's also going to be opportunities. We're going to be doing videos. Um, if you, um, Sarah, if you haven't signed up, or you're, let, we can, I'll send you a note and we'll show you where the details are, where whoever is going to be representing can do videos and discussions around um, the work that you're doing. Um, the other thing is there is the open marketing maintainers call, um, and we would love to just you know put together a checklist and help you uh, figure out which tools are available for any project in order to promote and to be able to better recruit, um, you know, more contributors in, uh, to your project. So please do join those calls. Um, but Sarah, I'll reach out directly to you in regards to Global Forum. Um, I'm happy to post, I'll post it on the TSC list so everybody has access to the same information. I know Salona has been talking about it as well. Um, about the videos, yeah, uh, thank you. We talked to Solana and uh, I started like creating the scripts and, th and such. For those, so yeah, we, we we subscribed to the video thing. Yeah, and I'll Fantastic. I'll uh, join the call, or I'll ask one of the maintainers, like technical guys, to join the call um, with the marketing committee. So yeah, thank you. We'll do that. We really want to share this with some with other people, and we'd really like to share more with the maintainers. Thank you. Great. Daniela, your hand is still raised. Do you want to say more? That was it. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Let's move on, guys. There's another report, this time for Hyperledger Indy. Uh, there was nothing salient in the report that led me to believe this needed to be, you know, discussed here, but uh, if there's anything, please speak up now. Either both from like, you know, either from the indie side, there's something specific they want to highlight beyond what's in the report, or on the other side from the TSC members, if they have any questions. And Shen Yang, you're making a lot of background noise, it seems. Thank you. Um, I have to get off mute before I try to talk, don't I? Yes, that works better. <laughs> um, one thing to highlight um, is that we're in the middle of coordinating a significant upgrade to the anonymous credentials part of the system. If you're involved in Hyperledger Ursa, you've heard about this as a non-cred 2.0. 
Um, if you've been involved in Indy for a long time, you've been probably hearing about this as the Indy Semantics Working Group that updates the, some of the data model around the verifiable credentials specification. Um, and we're looking for additional contributors around that. Um, and that may also be of some interest to those of you who are doing VKP based work on other ledgers um, because there's some significant updates and upgrades to some of the revocation mechanisms. So that's maybe one thing to call out here where folks from different projects are, are, are available um, as something that might be interesting to coordinate on or discuss at the Global Forum. Nice, thank you. Anything else? Any questions for Nathan or anyone else? If so there's not, a, we can. Um, yep. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, there's there, there's a mention of GitLab CI there. Um, was the direction that that we were all trying to we're exploring moving into was the uh, uh, Azure pipelines? Yeah, that's correct. And the team has been working on moving things over to other places. And what happened is one of the um, infrastructure servers at the Sovereign Foundation um, had a couple of uh, Jenkins plugins that uh, were out of date. And so it, we have a couple of legacy build systems from before some of those switches in infrastructure had occurred. And ha having that vulnerability in the Jenkins server has pushed us to move some things around in order to make sure that some of those systems that had a problem are no longer um, in the way. Okay, is, is there anything significant about um, you looking at GitLab CI versus Azure pipelines that would be of general interest to other projects? Um, we've had some trouble with some of the different kinds of build systems that have been discussed because there's a, a mobile component to um, the client wallet that we've been building with what was the Indy SDK component that's now been moving into the Ares project. Um, and that may be of something that's of interest to others who are working on build infrastructure. Um, but I think that the, the general discussion that we had on that task force around build systems included most of what we talked about. So, you know, if anyone's interested in that sort of thing, I would point you to that wiki space and to the work that Dave Hughesby has coordinated. Thanks. Yeah, I need to correct the record there. That's it's Rye actually. So um, talk to Rye if you got CICD questions. All right, I guess we're ready to move on then. Okay, so next I want to go back to the issue uh, regarding the common repo structure. We discussed it last week. It was uh, said that people wanted a bit more time so that maintainers of different projects could be made aware and have a look at it and comment back and I actually updated the decision log page so that it would actually reflect the formal proposal. And so I don't see any showstoppers. I've seen a few items that are worth keeping on exploring, like, you know, going beyond the list of documents, but also saying, hey, what the structure of a specific document could be like so that we can process it automatically and stuff like this. Uh, but I don't see any of these being showstoppers. I think this is a very good start we have already. And um, I think we, we, it's in our interest to adopt this and uh, as a first step and to keep refining it as we gain experience and come up with new ideas or proposals uh, to go beyond that. So I would like to formally propose the adoption of that uh, proposal that came from the task force. Is there any comments or questions on that proposal? Did, um, uh, I didn't see any, but Dan, since it was your email, did anybody respond from the product, uh, the project teams? I did not see any responses. Yeah, okay. So a collective yawn. I mean, <laughs> they still had some notes in the comment threads, so it wasn't a totally on. Yes, I think basic team actually looked at it pretty carefully and they commented on several items. So 
I got the feeling that at least there was one project that looked at it. And uh, I <clears throat> can you guys hear me? This is Dave. Yes. Excuse me. Go ahead. Dave. Um, I just had a general comment that this is great. I like the idea that we're standardizing around um, a, a normal structure for all of our repos. Um, I just wanted to point out, though, that we are in a multi-year self-sovereign identity initiative for making governance and provenance of the code management um, automatic. So this will be good for a while, but because we are inventing new things um, around repo structure, we will be diver uh, diverting away from this linter tool at some point, um, and probably sooner rather than later. Um, you'll notice that the did git stuff is getting close to being landed in git, which means we'll be able to start signing with, uh, you know, credentials stored in did documents, and we want to start moving in that direction. Plus, there's an initiative for LFID, plus, you know, self-sovereign identity, plus GitHub identity stuff for elections and other governance. So this is great. It's a good start, but, um, you know, and I definitely endorse this move. Um, but just know that we're going to be informing this linting tool and probably moving away from it um, probably in the next, well, 2020 for sure. We'll have some pieces in place. Okay. So Dave, I appreciate the heads up, but uh, you confused me a little bit in your use of we in your sentences there. I'm not sure whether you re who you're referring to when you say we are all working on some changes. We are working on the JIT GitHub. <laughs> I think if I give an exact answer for we, I might get into trouble. Um, I, those are my personal plans in the direction we want to go to. I'll start there. Um, there is a broader LF mo movement to come up with a better solution for CLAs and ICLAs and DCOs. So there has to be some overlap of what I want to accomplish with self sovereign identity, and what Linux Foundation wants to accomplish. Plus, now that most of our codes over, or all of our codes over at GitHub, we have GitHub IDs we need to account for. So um, because we are Hyperledger and we do self-sovereign identity, it is my hope that moving forward, we'll find some way to use self-sovereign identity to merge the needs of, or to meet the needs of LF, Hyperledger, and GitHub. So let me put it that way. I'm gonna sort of dodge the answer because these are, there is a plan, but um, as, concrete projects come out of that plan as we move forward um the, the way okay, will become when, more concrete okay but so when you say we are we are about to diverge from this it's like well this is not accidental right and who is we it's not us so we have a that do we are we gonna have a say in any of this i mean sure Okay. Um, so, all right. So I agree concrete, again. Yeah. I I think evolution is uh, probably a good thing, and uh, I welcome the heads up. But in any case, I I hope we have a bit more insights as to the details of some of those plans you're referring to that will impact the way we work before uh, you know they are imposed on us. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to be imposed. Don't worry about that. And okay. it will be involving the identity working group and the self-sovereign and Ursa and Aries and all that stuff. So I, 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 we got derailed on that part. Yes. Okay. The, the, the focus here was I highly endorse this move as this sets us up for a normalized evolution towards self-sovereign identity for this. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So is the current standard listed as the output of the linter or is it the content of the files and the linter is a tool used to enforce that? I'm sorry, say that again. Is what's going to be passed, is it a question, is it going to list, we expect these files in this structure and the linter is just a tool to enforce that standard or is the thing that's going to be voted on that we're going to use this linter with this config? Um, I'm proposing that we use this linter with this config and we can, you know, give the various projects a list of here's where you stand. And this is a set of recommended things that they should have. Finally, that's the real Chris Ferris. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gretel clearly doesn't like whatever Dana was saying. <laughs> if we know we're going to be switching tools, should we set the standard of here's what files are? 
and uh, decouple the standard from the tool? It, it really I'm, wasn't I'm clear to me that that, that, that the identity issues relate to repo linting anyway. I'm not sure that's what Dano was saying though. Uh, Dano, you were saying that the files the are same, what the standard is. is. The, what the requirements are and not the tool. And I'm fine either way. The, the, re, the net result is the same. If we put this checklist there and said, these are required and these are, you know, recommended or suggested, that would be fine with me. So it, that, that's the list that's captured here as the output? No, not, is that the whole list? That's, that's not current. There's an, another one in the other uh, file. I, I have to update this, I guess. When did you do that? Task Force page, I think that one I did update. Oh, I, I copied that over like a day uh, or two years ago. Maybe <laughs> before I edited it? I, well, I don't know. Now you... Well, it's linked at the bottom. The structure was last modified for the fourth, so there is no way. Uh, maybe I didn't. Uh, let's see. What did I do here? You may be right. Oh, no, that's not it. Okay. <sighs> okay, so what's in the proposal matches the. But, oh, Jesus Christ. I get uh, Dano's point, but I have the feeling that this is a level of detail that can be tackled independently, but maybe you feel, you guys feel that's wrong. I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. I propose so, that we, uh, that you guys adopt the, the uh, recommendations and <clears throat> that there is a commit made somewhere that has this file and we can roll it out as you know a PR, right? So the, the contents of the file, wherever it is, in the notes or somewhere else, right? It'll, it'll just come as a PR and the results will be a PR or something of that nature. So that's what I would propose. So the proposal does point to the fabric PR, which I, I, I specifically label 630 and everything. And yeah. if you follow this, it I contains- it. it wasn't passing the CI, but yeah, the, the, the file is still the same. But it, com it, it contains the repo lint.json file, right? Yes, right. So that's, to me, that's what we are talking about. If we all agree on that, then we should be good. And look, I mean, it's not the end of the world. We can change your mind if we don't like it. I think we need to move on. Holy I, crap. I agree. And this is why I don't want to get too, you know, uh, much into the, the details because I think, as I've said before, we're going to keep iterating over the details and, you know, tomorrow there'll be some other file and then maybe we want to change something or again, we want to go beyond that and add some structures, define the format of specific files. And so I expect us to keep working on this. What I would like from us today is that we all agree, yes, this is the way we're going. This is a step forward. It's moving in the right direction. Let's go with this. So that's what's meant to be embedded in this proposal from my point of view. Can we all go ahead with this? Anybody wants to If we had a task force that? call where we actually talked about this, I think this would have gone much smoother. Yeah, well, I couldn't get one. Sorry. Um, holy crap. You know, you're free to run one. I just didn't have the time. And every time I did have the time, I couldn't get everybody to on a call. So, uh. Dano, do you have a specific concern now on this proposal that would make you think we shouldn't vote? No, for not it? a concern. It looks fairly good. I was just, um, I think the standard should be on the files, not on a specific tool. And I'm, I'll write up a, a counter proposal if that's what's required.
So you don't want us to vote on this? Well, we could vote on it, but I think the standard should be against here's the files, not here's a specific tool, especially if David Hughesby came in today and just said, we're looking at retooling. I retract my statement if it's going to confuse this. We're not re-looking <laughs> re at the tooling. We're not retooling. This is a we're not retooling. to go against each of the repos. It doesn't require any changes of any of the repos, and then they can be sent to the maintainers, and they can do with it what they want. But we're yes. recommending very strongly that the ones that are required are there and the ones that are recommended, they can do what they want. I, I mean, again, I, I, look, I'm fine. Deno, if you want to put together a proposal that talks about the files and not the process, that's also fine. But I think we're spending too much time on this. I wholly endorse Chris's position on this one. And now I'm going to step back. So I, I like the idea of, of uh, clarifying which files are required. I don't know if every run through CI, we need to run this tool. So that's a different question. There is a question of implementation is, you know, exactly how do we implement this? Once we agree, okay, whether it's a tool or not, is like, you know, whichever way you enforce it is like, well, how often do you run this? I don't know. And I think those are so, like, know, if we put the repo linter in a GitHub action, you can get it with every every mainline build. I think that you know, the, the tool is good. I think it's great. So I think, you know, I, I get your point, I know, and I, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a stickler, so I totally appreciate your point, but I feel like, okay, the tool as it is today, you know, the pointers to the, the, the config file gives you a list. It's a matter of format to a certain extent. You can extract the list from this with a little bit of exercise. And if tomorrow we decide to choose another uh, tool, I think we could easily build on what we have now. And it's not like we'd be stuck because, oh, now we're not using that tool. Therefore, uh, previous uh, decision is bogus. It may not be as straightforward as it would be if we had just like a straight list, but. That's so my I, I guess the, the, one, of the, one of the comments that was made was recommended versus required files it does I, I apologize i haven't looked at the pr chris but does the repo linter actually or the the file itself show you what's recommended versus required the output does the output looks exactly like what's on the screen here these all look like they're required then right yeah so there's no recommended sorts of files everything that's listed here is, rec is required tracy it says either error or warning warning is recommended error is required okay okay so there is a way to say that okay so with all of that, I still want, you know, I still move the, to, to vote for this. How do people feel? Do anybody wants to second it? I'll second it. Thank you, Mark. Okay, I guess we'll do a vote uh, one by one then to have a clear answer because I'm not completely sure everybody's on board, so. Can you call on everybody, right, please? Who is in favor? I'm working on it. Uh, if someone else has the, the list open, that'd be awesome. I do. Okay. Do it, do uh, it. All right, so roll call vote. Yes, please. Angelo. I'm in favor. Arno. Yes. Chris. Yes. 
Dan. Yes. Gary. Sure. Yes. Hart. Yes. Mark. Yes. Nathan. Yep. Yep. Swetha. Yes. Tracy. Yes. And Troy. Yes. All right. Uh, yes, have it. That's unanimous. <laughs> Would have known. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. All right, we still have a bit more work to figure out all the details, but I'm glad we have actually agreed to something at least to get us moving. So I'll take that as a victory for now. Thank you. Um, all You're right. welcome, Arno. We aim to please you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's really high on your to-do list. Uh, <laughs> okay, now, and it, it, this one actually pains me, but you know, we have to get back to the other two uh, items related to the TSC election. <laughs> and, you know, it pains me because we really don't seem to be able to make real progress on this. We are going in circle back and forth. We have a few vocal people who are pulling one way or the other. And I don't see a sense of moving forward or progress on any of this. But do we have Dan on the, uh, sorry, is Brian on the call? No, I don't I see don't Brian. See Be because regarding the observers, last time we talked a bit more about the voter selection, so I want to spend a bit of time talking about the election observers. There was a point, at some point we said, oh, this raises privacy and confidentiality issues, we should really take it to the governing board. And as far as I know, this never happened. And I don't know, and, and Vipin said, come on, this is bull, this is uh, BS. We, uh, we can just decide this. And so I, I have to admit, I'm not sure how to even move forward on this. Just from process point of view, is that something we can decide on or what? So I think that just like, is, I feel like this is not a real issue that, like we've got the Linux Foundation administering a vote. If we can't trust the Linux Foundation, like we don't really need observers. This isn't an international election for some uh, actual political body. This is a steering. It's not. <laughs> this is an international body. Yeah. Um, I think. What am I doing here? I thought this was big time. <laughs> Shot down my <laughs> hopes and dreams. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I will stop. I couldn't resist. I apologize. I think. In the last like, two elections, you really think you'd be invited to something this big time? <laughs> That's why I'm mocked. really disappointed. I finally made okay, it to the big boys stop club, it, the guys. club, and this is what happened. All right, Mark wants to say something. I think in the last few elections, um, people that were running for the TSC were involved in helping plan the election and things like that, and that's why I had proposed we have people that aren't candidates be, you know, and I'm not saying anything wrong happened, but it's just not a good optic. And, you know, having the observers are people that can help the hyperledger staff with the election and they're not running for office. So there's no conflict of interest or potential. Yeah, conflict. It, 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 it seems to me like this is an inexpensive way to add a lot of transparency and it also gets the, uh, gives an opportunity for more people to get involved with the elections process, which hopefully helps the staff um, have some extra hands to help make the load lighter. So, you know, it, it seems like an easy thing for us to do that helps a lot with the PR benefit of, of what we do with the elections already. What are they helping with? Uh, tracking down people who have the no reply email addresses, making sure all the projects know that elections are coming up and that you know they need to notify people to go vote it's kind of just that the outreach make sure to get out the vote happens and that all the projects are fairly notified so i, I want to talk to like a couple of technical points that were kind of in there that may inform your discussions and tracy i think knows where i'm going to go with this um on the back end once we send the ballots out we don't have any i can't tell who has or has not voted so there's no way I can reach out to people who haven't voted. If, if I were to reach out 
and resend ballots, all I can do is copy paste the list of the ballot email addresses a second time, and it will send the ballots out. And people who have already voted will not be able to vote again, but they'll get another email. So on the back end, we don't actually see that. And I proposed before, and I'm willing to do it again. Um, I, I'm willing to set up a mock election using the tool. And I invite anyone on the TSC or anyone at all, we can do this. And you can see how the tool works from a mechanical side on the back end. So that, that may inform some of your discussions. But well, I'm not sure how though. Can you expand on this? What's your thinking? I mean, do I mean you're you're part of the stuff in very involved in this voting process. Do you feel like these observers, as Dan was describing, uh, uh, would help you or not? The only piece I was speaking to there was uh, where Dan was talking about. So the get out the vote is good. I'm all on board with everything up to the point where it was reaching out to people who hadn't voted. I can't get a list of people who have not voted. That's yeah, it. yeah, and I agree with that. I, I think what the, the these folks would do is just make sure that in the in the past we've had some trouble where maybe one project got a lot of notifications about the election and another project didn't, and so they felt like perhaps things were sandbagged one way or another. Someone like an observer can make sure that you know everyone was notified or can just tell everybody, yeah, the staff did everything they were supposed to do. We watched this whole process. You know, that way when there's questions, there's someone that can say, this is what we've always done. This is how the process worked. And we know that the process was followed. And that way we don't have to deal with as much flack as maybe we've gotten in the past. So I'm in favor. All of right, that. thank you. And I, I can think mechanically how we can do that. Uh, so I, I can work with an observer to propose a process by which we can do this uh, in a public way with the observer and preserve the privacy of the people who are getting ballots. So I, I, I can think about that. Okay, so that would be good if you could come up with a bit of a, you know, expectations as to what observers would, what function they fulfill and how this auto selection volunteering mechanism comes into play. Maybe we can flesh out a little bit the proposal with something more concrete that we could actually agree to. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to uh, make a slightly more concrete proposal with regards to the mechanical aspect at the end. So I'll take that. Thank you, Rai. Any other input for Rai before we move on? Uh, okay, probably just not, like we've had for the last few discussions, if we try to get too detailed in the proposal, then we will end up discussing every detail. <laughs> yeah, I have to try to find the sweet spot. It's not easy. But okay. All right. So now back to the voter selection then. I, as I said before, I mean, my, you know, what I would like us to do is to clearly capture the way it's been done. And, you know, we have a, we have a short description of that um, in the proposal. If you look at it right now, it says for TSC election 2019, I believe I got that from Rye. I asked him, what, how is this working? But maybe I forget exactly the source of this, but um, there is a description for whatever it's worth. And what I would like us to do is, you know, essentially my idea is this is the status quo. And if we do nothing, we just redo exactly this with whatever that means. And, and if people have an issue with this, the burden is on them to come up with counter proposal on how to edit this text to match what they think it should be. I cannot think of a better way to make progress on this. If you guys have ideas, I'm, I'm all ears. I am totally fine with this. What I want to happen is I want the TSC to, I don't want to catch a bunch of flack again about people who feel they weren't represented. I want the TSC to own like the list, who has the franchise, 
and who does not. And if it is as simple as they made a Git commit, I'm totally fine with that. You know, we just need yes, a way. And, and, uh, Go ahead. No, no, but I, I totally feel for you on this and I completely support your point of view. It, there's, it's totally unfair for people to give you slack. This. I mean, this is not right. It's like, um, and, and we have made those decisions before and we have defined an exception process for people to register and all that good stuff. And the, I mean, some of it was that our process was not as doc, you know, well documented as it should have been. We've already made all the decisions we have regarding the TSC election to have a plan uh, put up together beforehand, approved. So we, uh, we take more time to announce it and everybody. So I feel like if we do that right, at least in terms of transparency, you know, we should be better. I think there's always people who are going to feel like, well, you're not counting that as a technical contribution. That's wrong in my opinion. And that's fine. They can try and make a case to the TSC for changes in this regard. But, you know, for now, I think uh, it is what it is. And the burden is on them to convince the TSC to change this. I see Brian's joining the call. Yeah, but I think we kind of sidestep the issue on the <laughs> privacy. I think we can postpone that one. So I'd like to hear again from other people. I mean, with regard to the the to to the the plan I just laid out on, you know, starting from the existing text and and the tool that it links to, which you know we have to thank Tracy for having worked on this and. There's a very clear process here. If people don't like it, they should make concrete proposal on how to change the process. And I, I will point out, um, this tool is public, right? It's, it's in a, a Git repo, and there's nothing to stop people from cloning this tool and running it against GitHub themselves. You know, so that people can run this tool throughout the year if they wish, right? And find out what's going on. So this is exceedingly you can also, Yeah, you can also run it against a particular project, right? So if project maintainers are concerned that their uh, contributors are not included in the list because of a no reply or something like that, they can run it against their project and see exactly who has no replies and, and reach out to them. and actually update the mail map file to include the right email address that they want to be contacted at. For my yeah. own reason, I wrote this tool, Repo Lister, which you can run, which generates a list of all of the uh, current repos. So in order to feed the tool that Tracy wrote, <clears throat> so the, the, you know, this stuff exists. We're... Yes. So I, I think what that means though, is that, you know, those, the tool should not be changed in a way that affects the selection, that impacts the selection with that TSC approval. That way you can keep, you know, blaming us if somebody's not happy with the way it works. I mean, if there's a bug, it's one thing, you know, you fix a bug because you're missing a repo or something, that's, that's fine. But in the, in the principles of the selection, if there was a change in the rules, then probably it should be endorsed by the TSC. For sure. And again, it's not because I don't trust you're trying to do the right thing. It's really more because I want you to have the backup, you know, the, the backing of, of the TSC and say, hey, don't blame me. Yeah, no, I think the I think the maintainers of that lab are myself, Rai, Chris, and potentially a couple of others who were interested in community labs at that point. So all right. So unless there's any other comments, that's the plan forward. I think it's a good plan, to be honest. Uh, in the charter four A two. Um, says that the active contributors are those who have been accepted into the code base. So if you're running it against master and it presumes the maintainers accepted it, I think that quite nicely covers that particular clause from the charter. 
Thank you. Any other comments, reactions? If not, then I think we are done for this so for today. Just one last comment. Go ahead, Hong. Can we, can we give the LF staff, uh, you know, sort of some agency to do what they think, you know, to run a fair election? Um, because I just want to, you know, I could like, you know, add a commit and get it approved where it includes like a t thousands of dummy addresses or something like that. And I just want to give the LF staff, you know, providence to deal with stuff like that. That's right. Well, I think if they see, if anybody sees, you know, any kind of like oddity <laughs> such as the one you describe it, you know, they probably will raise a flag. That's what I would expect them to say. Okay, somebody is playing some game here. Right, but it would technically like not be against the rules right now. I understand, but this is why I said they can easily bring it up to us, and I'm sure we will quickly agree to discard those because. I mean, I don't know if it's hard to find, but if it's if it's there, it's the evidence is in the pudding, right? That's like that's pretty clear. Right, right. right. I just ideally we can just get out and you know say that this is the case, so we don't we're not doing this like three days before the election or something. Yeah, I see what you mean. So we should have some kind of clause that calls for this to have. Uh, ground for this kind of ruling is that what you're looking at yeah or? just a paragraph or something that says like you know the giving the lf staff power to remove what they think are fraudulent commits or, or fraudulent voting efforts or something just so that like if right right look if i create an ursa commit that has the email addresses like blocky mcchain face with the number one through five thousand Rai should be able to go and remove those without uh, asking the TSC. Yeah, I think it, to make it complete, they should still report it to the TSC, I guess through, you know, notify the TSC and proceed. Something like this. Yeah, that sounds good. That way, if somebody feels like, okay, they're <laughs> overstepping the, the, their responsibility, we can easily inter intervene and otherwise we can just trust them and move forward. So we're not blocked. Yep, that sounds okay. good. Well, we can add something to that effect. I think that's a reasonable addition. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, if not, I think we can leave it at this for today. I am happy to take a crack at what we just discussed to update the the issue the proposal on the page. And uh, maybe we can have a vote on that sooner rather than later. And again, I mean, if somebody feels there is something else missing, please comment to the page and we will uh, accommodate as we always do. All right, we have five minutes left. Is there anything else? From my point of view, this is more than enough to call this a successful call. So I'm happy to call it a day. But if there's anything else that anybody wants to bring up before we close, we can maybe do that. OK, hearing none, uh, we will close the call on this. Thank you all for joining. Talk to you again next week. Bye.